Good evening, Saints. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church. It's been quite a year, and we're already just into March. Um, it's been, um, say, since from last year to this year, with all the uh, COVID, whatever the truth is, perhaps will come out. We're not going to stick there. We're going to Romans chapter 10. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans 10. And we're going to read um, the rest of the chapter. And um, we're going to concentrate on some key verses in there. So Romans 10, beginning with verse 11, for the scripture says, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on Christ. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. How then can they call on him that they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news but not all obey the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the message about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Yes, they did. Their voice has gone out to the whole earth, and their words to the ends of the world. But I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous. Of those who are not a nation, I will make you angry by a nation that lacks understanding. And Isaiah says boldly, I was found by those who were not looking for me. I revealed myself to those who were not asking for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and a defiant people. May the Lord richly bless his word. Our Abba Father, we thank you so much for giving us these words. Thank you so much that your last revelation was Jesus Christ and he came into the world to save all who would call upon him and believe and repent. As we break your word open tonight, may we hear the soft sound of his sandal feet. May we see Jesus in Him only. Because, as He said, You search the Scriptures for eternal life, and they are about Me, Jesus. May You open stony hearts tonight to hearts of flesh. Give us ears to hear. And give us faith to trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, you've heard me quote most of these verses several times. This is a passage to the believers, and it's a passage to all believers, Jew and Gentile, Jew or non-Jew. It's also a passage to all unbelievers. Jew and Gentile. When God called Israel, He called them a nation to Himself. He said, if you will obey Me. Now when I say when He called the nation Israel, I'm talking about it, Mount Sinai. And they came up to the mountain. And... Um, Probably next week we're going to look at some mountains, at least three. <laughs> and um, 
They did not want to hear him. They said, talk to Moses, and whatever you say, we will do. And the Old Testament Mosaic Covenant was if you would believe, you would be saved. However, the true purpose of the covenant was to show them they could not believe and drive them to Christ. But most of them died in unbelief. But not all. We're going to see next week that um, we're going to look at Moses and Elijah and Christ, of course. Because Moses, he talks about here, and Elijah, he's going to, going to talk about in the first part of the next chapter. And they're both important. And rather than do one at one time and one another, I want to bring them together so that you see. But here we see, picking up from last week, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame. You know, there's a day coming. We know it is because Christ rose and he's the judge of that day. And it says those who believe won't be put to shame. You know why? Because they've already been judged. They've been judged in Christ. Christ took the punishment for all who believe and keep on believing. We do not believe that faith for a moment brings life for eternity unless that moment was your last moment here on earth, like the thief on the cross. What did he do after he was saved? He died in agony. Tonight might be the last day of someone listening to me Look to Christ and be saved, for He is God. There's no one like Him. Confess Him as Lord. And Paul is telling us here, there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. And that's the reason I brought up the Old Covenant. Because the Jews were supposed to take that Old Covenant and go into the world with it, and yet they didn't. They kept it to themselves. And in fact, they became like or worse than the nations around them over a period of time. And so when Christ came and He ascended, we're going to look at something really glorious in a minute, but when He ascended, He gave them marching orders the church. I don't know how many were there. Some people say there were 12. Some say there was over 500. We don't know. It doesn't, you can read the passage, you can get out of it what you want to prove, okay? But he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That meant no longer just Jews, but Gentiles. In Acts 8.1, I'm sorry, 1.8, he said, you shall go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world with the gospel. They didn't do it. They stayed in Jerusalem, built mighty church, and then Acts 8, 1, God scattered them through Paul the Apostle. In fact, Paul, doing the scattering, created the church, maybe, that he was first ministering in at Antioch. So, this is the, the thing to the Jews. They saw these Gentiles coming in. And they said, we, you have to be circumcised and start obeying the law. And Paul said, no. And Peter said, no. He said, it's a burden on us we couldn't bear. Why are you trying to put it on the Gentiles? And Peter lived like a Gentile until some people came to Galatia, maybe good Lord willing. We will look at that in the future. But this is what the gospel does. It elevates the believing Gentile with the believing Jew and their equals. It takes the unbelieving Jew and makes him equal with the unbelieving Gentile. You're either in Adam or you're in Christ. There is no third group. And then Paul says, Because the same Lord of all, 
richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The first sermon preached on Pentecost said the very same thing. It's a quote from Joel, the second chapter. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, and I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. That means Jew and Gentile. Anyone who believes receives the Holy Spirit. But I want to look at some verses today as we're looking at this passage. First, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. We know in order to believe you have to have the Holy Spirit because this verse tells us, he says, only someone that has the Holy Spirit can say, Jesus is Lord and mean it. Oh, you can mouth the words, but I mean, believe it in your heart. The Holy Spirit comes in and gives you a new heart and you believe willingly. God doesn't bring people kicking and screaming into the kingdom. Through the preached word, He makes their heart alive to Him. A heart that was at one time at enmity, as we saw in the 8th chapter of Romans. But now is a heart of flesh that loves Christ. And he says, How then can they call on Him they have not believed in? You can't, cannot call unless you believe. And the Holy Spirit, when He makes us alive, in other words, we're born again, regenerated, made alive, then we have faith. The stony heart will not believe because it's dead to God. It's in, a, in fact, it hates God. We saw that in the 8th chapter of Romans. How can they believe without hearing? You can't believe anything you hadn't heard, no matter how wonderful. And how can they hear without a preacher? Somebody has to come and give them the Word. Now, I think he's maybe using the term preacher loosely here. It doesn't have to be in a church. It could be a, somebody out on the street. It could be somebody you meet in a store or a football game, anywhere. But you cannot hear unless somebody tells you is what he's saying. And how can they preach unless they are sent? And that's what Paul is referring back to the Great Commission. Before the Great Commission, there's a great announcement. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and earth belongs to me. That's the great announcement. Then he says, because of that, go into all the world and I am with you wherever you go and proclaim the gospel to every creature. He says, as it is written, it's in Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah. Isaiah was proclaiming the gospel in his book. Lord, who has believed our message? And then we have the 53rd chapter of Isaiah where he talks about the Messiah being crucified for his people. He says, So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the message about Christ, that he came into this world to do the will of his Father, which was not to lose any that the Father had given him. And he came and taught them what he was going to do. I am going to the cross. And three days later, I will rise again. And I will institute a new covenant. We've seen all these things. So faith comes from what is heard and what is heard through the message about Christ. Did they not hear it? Yes, they did. Their voice has gone out to the whole earth and their words to the ends of the earth. Did Israel not understand? First Moses said, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. Remember in Deuteronomy, he says, you are a nation, a royal priesthood. And then we see in 1 Peter, the second chapter, that is cited for the church. It was a physical thing in the Old Testament. It's spiritual under the New Covenant. Isaiah says boldly, I was found by those who were not looking for me. The Gentiles weren't looking. And yet, here comes these Christians telling them, and Christ made them alive just like you and me. 
and they believed and they set their hearts on him. He says, I revealed myself to those who were not asking for me. Because no one would ever ask if he doesn't reveal. We see in Hebrews 12 what kind of salvation we have. I'll turn to Hebrews 12. Twenty-five. See to it that you do not reject the one who speaks. For if they did not escape when they rejected him who warned them on earth, that's Moses, or a prophet, even less will we, if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven, the ascended Christ warns us from heaven, do not neglect this great salvation. His voice shook the earth at that time, but now He has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. He's going to shake the earth and the heavens. And He goes on to say, yet once more indicates the removal of what can be shaken, that is, created things so that what is not shaken might remain. Everything on this earth, it does not glorify Christ will be shaken. The saints will remain. They are the ones that cannot be shaken. If you're in Christ, you cannot be shaken. You cannot be destroyed by Satan and his minions. And all the money in the world, all the assets in the world will not save a person. They're all going to be melted with fervent heat on that last day when Christ returns. And that could be today. He says there's no distinction. Believing Jews and Gentiles are equally saved. We see in Acts 15, we don't hear this preached much because of the current religious scene, but in Acts 15, verse 9, He made no distinction between us. This is Peter the Apostle preaching cleansing their hearts by faith. Now then, why are you testing God by putting a yoke on the disciples' necks that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way Gentiles are. We're all saved by Christ. Even the Old Testament saints were saved by Christ. Why? Because it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to pay for sins. They could not cleanse their conscience. They were saved by looking forward to the coming, the promise of the coming of the Messiah. And the ones that believed in that were saved. We look back to the coming of the Messiah and what He did. In the Old Covenant, they had the picture. In the New Covenant, we have the reality. And yet, in the Old Covenant, the ones that believed also are saved by Christ. We see in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, that when Christ ascended, He led captivity captive. That means the dead Old Testament saints that were waiting, in the, they called it in the Old Testament Sheol, the, the grave, their spirits went with Christ. And He gave gifts to us. All kinds of gifts. The gift of salvation. Apostolic gifts. Gifts of service. Some of these gifts are still in operation. So, what are we to make of this? If you're sitting here and you're getting tired of the struggle, you need a new dose of the gospel. Why? Because the power of the gospel saves us. Because there's a righteousness revealed in Christ through faith by grace. 
You are not responsible for the outcome of what you do and say. You're just responsible to trust Christ. He says, you can water and you can plant, but only the Spirit gives the increase. And the same word that saves somebody will condemn another. Pagan, and I say that in a loving way, your only hope is Christ. Your only hope, and it's urgent that you come to Christ. Because there will come a time where He may stop dealing with you. Somebody asked me one time, are you trying to scare people into hell? I wish I could. I know I can't. The Spirit, if He is dealing with you, commands you to come today. I remember I went to high school with a guy named Tommy. I don't know where Tommy is. But we moved from that town to another town, not too far away. But one Sunday, Tommy showed up at church, at our church. And in that service, he came under, I, I hesitate to use the word conviction, but there was something going on because Tommy's hands were on the back of that pew, and Tommy was dark complexioned. The son loved Tommy, but his hands were as white as a sheet. And he would not give in to Christ that day. I don't know if he ever did. That's the last time I ever saw him. Don't be unsurrendering, if I can coin a phrase. Surrender to Christ. No matter what you think, about whether you're free or not. You are a slave to sin if you're not in Christ. No one is free free. You're either a slave to sin or you belong to Christ. And in Christ there is true freedom because if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. So what should you do? Paul tells us here. The message is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. And you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness. And one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. When Christ went into the heavens and took His rightful place where He sat down, He said he had said it was finished, remember? Last Sunday, it's finished. And now He sits. We're told one time in Scripture He stood up when Stephen gave His life for Christ. doesn't say he ever did that for anybody else or he didn't do it for anybody else. I like to think that when a saint dies, Christ stands up for him and welcomes him home. But there's an urgency. Our nation, unless we're given a spiritual revival, is on its downfall. And we can complain and carp all we want to about what's going on. But we need to trust the one who is doing the going on. Everything that happens is by God's allowance. Like I tell you, the same grace that saves one condemns another. I urge you, as the second chapter, I mean the second book of Corinthians, the fifth chapter says, we urge you to be reconciled to Christ. For he who did no sin, who knew no sin, became sin so that all the ones believing will become the righteousness of God in Christ. Go with grace and peace. Amen.